to Top of the Round Paradigm. My name's Kenan. I'm your GM for this campaign. With me we have... Hey, I'm Nikki, and I play Clover. Hi, I'm Jorash, and I play Varian. Thank you to everyone that has left us reviews and ratings this week. Thank you for the Podchaser review by GTREF93, and the Spotify rating by Gabe. Thank you to Mama Mac and Ruckland for the episode reviews, as well as the Mysterious Raider, who rated episode 12 and a few of our earlier episodes. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Your reviews absolutely fuel the show and make us feel like you are enjoying what we are doing, which is the goal. Be sure to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, a rating on Spotify. Let us know if you do. We'll shout you out on the show or an episode review or show review on Podchaser. And if there's any other obscure apps that we're missing, just let us know if you left us a review there so we can go and see it and love it and shout your name on the show. By the way, we are not releasing an episode next week, June 19th, as it is a federal holiday, Juneteenth. That means it's the perfect time to get caught up if you have somebody that you're looking to get into the show. That being said, we will shout you out if you leave us reviews, not next week because there's no episode, but the week after. So leave us reviews in the meantime, and then we will shout out a whole bunch of you at that point. You know you want to do it. In the meantime, tell your friends about us, post about us on social media. Word of mouth is the best way to get us out there. Thank you very much for your support. Shout out to our executive producers, Ray and Jermaine. Thank you guys so much. We have a Discord. The link is in the show notes. It's a very cool community of toter tots like you and the crew. Come talk to us, fuck around, talk about the episodes, share pics of food and dogs. It's a lot of fun. Hey guys, we have a Patreon over at patreon.com. Who would have guessed? slash top of the round you can go and sign up for many of our voluptuous and alluring tiers that will grant you amazing little things like toter caps or ken makes good worlds and shit or nikki or my's bonus campaigns that are spicy and fun in very different ways from top of the round join us have fun get more toter goodies for your ear holes hello everyone it's Valis. I need you to go to totopodcast.com and hit that merch button and buy stuff. So if you don't, I'm going to make sure that cane stays away from you guys so you feel every little bit of regret and you're going to suffer. So if you don't want to do that, just click that merch button and then you can buy anything you'd like. So do that and I'll wait. The button's right there. Just click it. It's not hard. Oh, hey, we have a P.O. Box. P.O. Box 603, Circle Pines, Minnesota, 55014. Address those letters, fan art, um, clips of your hair to Kenan. Just kidding. Is that a bald joke? No. (laughs) Maybe, sorry. To White Raven Studios. It was an unintentional (laughs) bald joke. Anyways, hey, send us your shit. Not really. Not literally. Send us things. Reverse merch. Do it. Wow. I know we weekly tell you to check the trigger warnings in the show notes, but this week, please do, if you don't usually, as this episode is spice level 120. So I would recommend that you go look before listening, just so you're aware. That's actually pretty low on the Scoville scale, so if it was, maybe you don't have to. It was Scoville, how how spicy. Think of hot ones, and it's the it's the last dab or whatever. One billion. I don't know. It's a lot of Scoville. Go read the trigger warnings. Let's check in with our resident newscaster, Justin, to figure out what happened last time. Uh, Thanks, Ken. This is Justin with Justin. Um... Some of my producers told me that I need to start interviewing people more. So I'm going to try and do that here, because it looks like uh, that uh, Payne, Lariah, whatever their name was, is uh, leaving the group sad because they they didn't get to eat dinner with them. Um, so, uh, excuse me, excuse me, miss? Uh, me? Yes, um... You're- Talking to me? Yes, uh, I, my name is Justin, and I'm with the press. You're not scared? No, I'm I'm with the press, unfortunately. Oh, so it's your job? Yeah, um, I like selling okay. greeting cards. What do you, What do you like to do? 
What do I like to do? Y yeah. No one's really ever asked me that before. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't have to ask that then. Did, did it make you uncomfortable? No, no. Um, protecting people's pretty fun. Um, going to dinner. Food's always nice. Sometimes I crochet. I don't get a lot of time for that, though. Crochet like making stuff out of yarn? Yeah. Have you ever tried to crochet a greeting card? How would that work? I Wouldn't it just be a square of yarn? So like a mini blanket. With a blanket for it. like a mouse? But you could fold it over. Or like a really small dog. Or one of those little... Maybe tea... like a baby dog. Or like a teacup pig. Have you ever seen they fit in like your hand? Um, anyway, sorry, I'm, I'm with the press and we have to ask questions about, um, why are you in the woods? Um, my coworker, Fear, was going over here a bunch and I was trying to figure out why. And then I ran into a girl in the, alone in the woods and it's a dangerous place here. So I was going to check on her and then she started to run away from me, which is normal behavior. But then she kind of seemed friendly, so I asked her to dinner, but then she said no, which again is kind of normal. Oh, you're kind of sad. I'm not sad. Um, uh, I have to finish this news report really quick, but do you want to, um, show me your crochet stuff and I'll show you my greeting cards after this. I thought it was your job to talk to me. Uh, the, the, the job is to interview you. I can talk to you after. You want to? Sure. I just have to finish this report real quick. Um, just you want to be friends? Sure. Just um, I need you to cover your ears for the rest of this. Just Why? Don't worry about it. Well, I'm gonna go back to my room and get my crochet stuff. Oh, okay, that works. Um, I'll meet you in town somewhere in the public area. Okay. Okay. Um, so I have to hurry up because I am gonna go have um. Well, by the time this report's done, uh, lunch with a friend tomorrow. It's gonna be a long report. I probably should have told her about that. Oh shoot. Um, I'll be a little while, maybe tomorrow, okay? Because, uh, this report's gonna kind of go long, unfortunately. I can't control how long this is. I hope she heard me. Okay, so. So Clover and Varian are talking, and they go further away to sleep, and then they come back, and Varian goes into town to buy a map, because they want to go to... Not Grace. They want to go north. But they have to go by Grace. Andrea shows up and tells Clover that they have to go by Grace to go north. And now Clover's freaking out, even though they don't have to go to Grace to go north. I think it's just the distance thing with her. She probably shouldn't have told her. She wouldn't have known. Um, so Varian's helping some shop set up armor, because they won't sell him a map early unless he does free labor. Uh, and then Clover continues tasks. Innocent but probing questions of Drea and makes Drea sad because Ouroboros is in prison still, and that makes Drea sad. Now, uh, Varian's coming back and Clover's still freaking out about having to go even one foot closer in the direction of Grace, even though she's been doing that a lot and hasn't realized it. But now that she's aware of it, it's making her freak out. Uh, so they have to go to a place called Ethos. And they run into two more apostles, which there's not that many of them, and Ishnar is a really big place, so it's kind of weird that they're running into so many. They're running into them really fast, like a lot of them. It's kind of suspicious and weird. It doesn't seem normal. I wonder what that's about. But apparently, um, oh, breaking news! The town of Ethos has been attacked by Fae. Um, I would warn anyone near the area to stay away and anyone in the town um i'm sorry i just heard about it so it's already too late for you to evacuate uh even though those two apostles um sorrow and oh, i smudged my notes um sorrow and uh friend i don't remember what their title was i got distracted by trying to report breaking news uh too late so they warned them not to go and then they go anyway, and Clover seems like she wants to check to see if anyone needs help. And then their uh, despair disappears, which I think means there's another apostle again. Seriously, how many are there? Um, anyway, I gotta go have lunch with a friend, so, uh, uh, ba back to you, Ken. Bye. Thanks, Justin. Our story continues now. We left off with Clover entering ethos being the worst 
And Varian trying to stop her being the best. So much bias in this room. <laughs> <laughs> the worst is trialed. What are you up to? So the last that you described it to me, there are bloodstains all over the ground. Mm-hmm. There is a singular figure directing traffic. Yes. Many panic. Yes. Is there anyone else that looks like they know what's going on or they're official? Apart from the cloaked figure in front of me. As you get further into Ethos, roll perception check. 32. You see a very large pile of bodies stacked up and a majority of the blood smear drag marks lead to that. There are a few townsfolk that have been propped up against broken walls and those that aren't injured, and there's very few of them, but they are trying to treat the ones that are still alive. You don't see anyone else that seems like they're in charge other than the figure that is directing the unharmed citizens. Okay, so it doesn't look like there's an infirmary or a clinic, or I just don't know? No. Okay. Okay, hang on. I'm having a panic attack. All right, I'm fine. (laughs) You'll want to understand this later. Okay, so Clover has her horse, and so I'm guessing, I mean, look, everyone has a little bit of despair in their heart, but I don't think that she would be able to pinpoint that it's the despair that's gone, because I figured that she's just going to feel slightly different. Not, oh, there goes my despair! (laughs) That's that feeling. The emptiness inside of me that's gone. Okay. So, how far away are we from this figure? You are about 100 feet away now. Okay. Clover is going to quicken her horse's trot until she's about 40 feet away from the figure and look over at Varian. What is he doing? Varian is on his bike. He's slowed to a stop and is just watching you go in. He's not going in himself because what's he going to do for medical aid? Just put people down? (laughs) He's not not a help in this situation. So Clover's going to look back, realizing that Varian has not followed her, and then she is going to gallop up to you and jump off her horse, and then she is going to rifle in her bag, pull out her med kit, sling it over her torso... And then she's going to look at you. I'm trusting you with my horse and my things. The horse and things that I got back for you. Right, which is why I can trust you with them, I'm pretty sure. You know, this is a terrible idea. We should just keep going. I don't care. I need help. I don't have time for this. She's going to hand you the reins. (sighs) Fine. And then she's going to run towards the figure in the center. I'm going to watch her run off. You run over to the figure directing the unharmed citizens their back is still towards you could I politely step around to the front side without interrupting anyone put me in coach (laughs) 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 yes but for funsies roll a performance check (laughs) to see how polite you are Uh, 26 oh you're pretty polite Okay. about how you step around him (laughs) okay Clover's gonna take a deep breath She's not wearing her hood. She's just going to look up at the tall, helmeted figure. I'm guessing they're helmeted. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm a trained medic from All Hands Infirmary in Grace. How can I help? I'm so scared. Oh, no. You see him pause and then look down at you. Clover waves. A trained medic. That was fast. Okay. (laughs) He'll point over to his right. You can start with them. They're the worst off. Okay. Clover is going to rush in that direction. And as she does, she is going to pull off her scarf, which is long and thin, and start tying her hair back with it. And she's going to tie it in a big old bow that hangs behind her. So. Okay. How many people are in the direction he pointed? Fifteen. Okay. (laughs) Is there anyone actively working on them? No. Are they outside? Yes. Okay. How far away are they? 20 feet. Okay, Clover rushes over there and just starts treating people. All right. Clover has the ward medic feet, so I can treat four people at once. 
I believe it does take 10 minutes. So Clover is going to perform treat wounds on four of the most critical patients to begin with. And she's very focused. I just crit on them. So they all get 48 plus 30 hit points. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So they all regain 40 hit points and Clover is working on them for 10 minutes. All right. Varian, what would you like to do for 10 minutes? Varian will probably move everything closer and position himself and the horse and his bike outside of town, getting ready to continue traveling on the road outside of town because he doesn't really care about going in there and seeing people die. It doesn't matter to him. You save them and they live, they die, and their souls apparently get taken away by shadows in the Braxis and not go to the ethereal plane, so whatever. <laughs> okay. All right, so you get ready for leaving as soon as Clover is As soon done. as we arrive. <laughs> <laughs> like a true introvert. <laughs> and I'm ready to go. How severely wounded are these people? Should I just put them down? I can come in there. And do <laughs> wow. That. The ones you are working on seem like they are very close to death. Okay. So in the midst of treating these four people, the first four, she is going to take off her outer coat and her gloves because it's easier. So her arms and her hands are exposed. You treat those four. Some of them are missing limbs. Some of them have large gashes in their torsos. We move on to the next four. Mm-hmm. I crit again. <laughs> they all gain 50 hit points. All right. As another 10 minutes goes by. I'm assuming she's just covered in blood at this point. Oh, yeah. Blood, body goop. You are able to reposition one of the four that you're working on. You're able to reposition some of their intestines that have come out. <laughs> doing doing God. Go, Abraxas's work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How focused are you? Very. Very? Very. Okay. Roll a perception check. Okay. 35. All right. You see in the next group over two of the ones that were wincing in pain have kind of quieted down. Did they die? I don't know. You're helping these four right now. <laughs> you're fast enough. You're fast enough, kid. Clover is going as fast as she can to complete treating wounds on these four and then she intends to move towards those two and the two next to them. All right, so you finish up with this group and move on to the next four. I will let your perception check drag a little bit. You're so kind to I know, me. I am this the most thoughtful GM. <sighs> Jesus, okay. The two that have gotten quiet are very still. Like, how old are they? What are their wounds like? I'm going to need some more details. Just traumatize me, why don't you? <laughs> traumatize me, Captain. <laughs> One of them is a mid-40s woman, and she's missing her right arm and has a large gash in her side, and some of her insides are outside, and she is clutching a... About oh, three year old who is also missing a limb. Jesus Christ! <laughs> okay. Uh, their right leg. With your perception check, the child had less severe injuries, but probably bled out. Are they dead? Yes. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. She's gonna take a deep breath and move on to who needs to be treated because she knows that she can't focus on that. Okay. Roll your. Dicey dice. Okay. Good job, Nikki. I crit again. What the fuck? Uh, look, uh, my healing is fucking amazing, okay? 49 hit points for the next four. Okay. You 
stabilize the next four. So it would be at 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's one left, because there was 15. Is Varian just hanging out? Is anyone coming by outside of town? Nope. And nothing's happening. He's just chilling, keeping an eye on your horse. Waiting to go. Okay, she moves to the last one. All right, roll your dicey dice. I crit again. Another 49 hit points. Okay. My medicine is plus 19. Does that tells you anything? It tells me nothing. Okay. Okay. So you're able to bandage them up and stop the bleeding, put things back where they should. Is anybody talking to me? Nope. Due to the drugs or herbs you're using, or their own wounds, you're not quite sure, the group you're treating is sedated. Okay. After Clover knows that they're stable, she's going to move back to the two that she lost. And then she is going to quietly... Are their eyes closed? Mm-mm. Okay, she's going to... The same the movies. <laughs> close their eyes and lay them both down on the ground next to each other and look for a cover or something that she can put over them. There is no cover. Okay. And she's just going to sit next to them okay. and try and catch her breath because she has been very quickly treating people's gigantic wounds for 40 minutes. So. Okay. So as you take a break, Varian, are you still waiting? Let's see. I've grown bored. Varian, while sitting there, is thinking, well, maybe despair has the lead on where guilt might be. Maybe I should go in and check. Is there anywhere that Varian could tie the horse's reins to? Or would I just affix them to the bike? You could easily affix them to the bike. The bike's heavy if you turn it off. I'll do that. I'll turn off the bike and affix the horse's reins to the bike. And peek into the town to see the current goings on and what the hell is keeping that kid for so long? <laughs> Alright, so you peek in, roll a perception check. 25. You see Clover in front of a group of 15, 13 of which are bandaged and <laughs> stabilized, and two are laying down. She's a mess. <laughs> and <laughs> Yeah, she is just covered in bodily grossness. Okay, what's the apostle doing? The figure that was directing traffic, if you will, has moved over to the large pile of bodies. I'll make my way towards them. You make your way over towards the figure. What does it look like they're doing with this large pile of bodies? Are they inspecting it? <laughs> It looks like they are standing in front of it, staring at it. Varian will walk up beside him to his right and stand next to him, staring at the bodies as well. Do I see any souls lingering about? You do not. But their bodies are all still there. They weren't claimed by the shadows. Not yet. Does the figure say anything when Varian stands right next to him? Roll a perception check. Pretty good. 37. You hear a very muffled, hushed prayer coming from the helmeted figure. I've observed enough of these people to know that I shouldn't interrupt them while they speak to their Abraxas. So I'll wait till they're done. As you wait, roll perception check. 32. You see wisps of shadow start to come off the bodies, and a large circle appear around them, and the large pile of bodies starts sinking into the ground. Okay. Okay. Being whisked away to the shadow plane. Varian's just gonna study the phenomena that is happening before him. <laughs> See if there's any sort of insight or anything he can glean off of watching this occurrence. As you watch and the pile gets smaller and smaller as the shadows envelop them, you see inky black hands occasionally reach out and grab a limb and drag a body in. It's not like they're just sinking. They're being pulled down. 
One by one? Yeah. Okay. Fun. All right. It's perfectly normal. <laughs> Make a note of that. A mental note. Made. Done. Okay. Perfect. About five minutes go by, and when there is no more bodies in the pile, the circle of shadow starts getting smaller and smaller until it disappears. Has this guy over here stopped his prayers? Or is he still praying? His prayer stops once the shadow is completely gone. Okay. Does he say anything then? He pauses for about ten seconds after finishing praising. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You want to try again? (laughs) No, I don't. No. (laughs) (laughs) Can I help you? Yeah, I wanted to ask if you knew anything about the current whereabouts of guilt. Didn't want to interrupt your prayers. I know what those are now. (laughs) Though I thought you had to be kneeling and You did it wrong. (laughs) Your form was poor. (laughs) I've seen proper prayer. (laughs) That wasn't it. (laughs) He doesn't say that bit. (laughs) I appreciate your respect for the dead. As far as guilt, I haven't seen the man in about a year. I see. And are they really dead if they don't go to the ethereal plane? You see his head turn and look at you. Not many know of that place. Who are you? My name's Varian. What's yours? (laughs) It's nice to meet you, Varian. My name's Porter. You're a bitch. (laughs) You're a bitch. How do you know about the ethereal plane? Varian just looks over at him and then gestures to himself. (laughs) You see him look you up and down. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, oh. I assumed you were a cold elf. Do I... Is that what they look like? Depending on their complexion. If they get cold enough, they turn blue. Slightly. Like you. Oh. I guess I've not seen... One of them before. There aren't many elves left. I see. So are you just here because the plants attacked this town? The Fey? I was summoned here, yes. To protect the town, or what's left of it, and its people. Summoned by... God. Abraxas. Uh, Yes. Yes. And he's the one that takes the bodies to the shadow plane not personally but he's the one that makes it possible so your prayers were telling him or asking him to gather that pile no my prayer was that these people find rest if you want them to find rest why not let them go to the ethereal plane Because the ethereal plane's closed. The ethereal plane is closed. Who closed the ethereal plane? A safe assumption would be your boss. Why would he do that? I have no idea. What? Volkar wouldn't just... What? I'm not positive, I'm guessing, but he is the only one I can think of with the power to shut down access. Does does this have something to do with Prince Agar? Who? (sighs) Never mind. It hurts me every time. (laughs) He got erased. (laughs) Okay, um, guess I should go see if my friend has finished helping. Varian will turn and look over towards where Clover is. Right. As you turn, you hear footsteps walking away from you. Varian will take a glance back. You see Porter walking towards a group of townsfolk that have light bruises and scrapes on them. Varian will make his way over to Clover, and the 
mess that she is. Clover is sitting crisscross applesauce, looking at the ground, just not entirely there. Marion will approach and observe the scene before him, and he'll walk next to Clover and then squat down and look at her. She doesn't notice you? You can't save everyone, but... I suppose a lot of these people would be dead if it wasn't for your intervention, so you still did quite a bit of good. How did you know what I was thinking? Can you read minds? Yes. (laughs) Wait, really? So you know everything? You can't know everything. This whole time, I don't know why you haven't talked about it. Gotcha! (laughs) Okay, what color am I thinking of? Is it green? No. No, it's red. All I can see is red. (laughs) You're lying. I was just trying to reassure you. That you can read minds? No, I just didn't want... You seemed very alarmed at that fact. So I wanted to... I didn't deserve to die. I wasn't fast enough. That's not why they died, Clover. It's my fault. It's not your fault. Did you make them get attacked? No. So how is it your fault? Because I couldn't get to them in time. She looks at you, just blood splattered all over her face and in her hair. Clover, everyone on this plane could die at any time. Is it your fault if they die and you're nowhere near there? What if there's someone in the life kingdom right now that tripped and fell on a shop rock and then impaled them. Is it your fault that dying right now? Why are you describing this to me? I'm just trying to point out that you can't be everywhere at once and you can only do so much at once. Her eyes are tearing up. Okay. No one can save everyone. But I want to. I know you want to, but you also have to manage your expectations. Okay. I thought you weren't going to come in here. I thought that you didn't want me to do this. Why yes, are you here? Because sitting out there, I was not doing anything when I could talk to one of the apostles and see if they had a lead on guilt. Oh. Did you get anything? Not on guilt, but I learned a little bit. About what? Uh, about the ethereal plane. And oh, that place you're from? Yes. Is it okay? I don't know. Oh, do you need, do you need to visit home to make sure or something? I shouldn't return home until after I've completed. Oh, right, right, because you're wanted. Yes. Right. Okay. But the people that would want me would also probably have answers to my questions. But that's I have more important questions. Complicated. I need answers while I'm still here. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Clover looks around. Is there anybody else that looks wounded? Roll a perception check. Okay. 22. There's a few that have light scrapes and bruises that the figure that directed you is over by. Uh, There is a couple that are missing arms but look like they have been crudely bandaged. Is the figure actively trying to help the people who are slightly wounded? It looks like he's talking to them. Okay. I might go just make sure that they're okay real quick before we go, if that's okay. I suppose, although they are being tended to and... They're just talking. Their situation doesn't seem critical. Well, it doesn't, but that doesn't mean that I can't not help. Right, but maybe there's people on the road that might be in more urgent need of help. Let me go ask. Just uh, let me, please. Okay. I'm doing it anyway. Clover is going to stand and inhale and actively start to wipe the blood from her face and realize that her face and her hands are both bloody, so it's not going to do any good. And then she's going to start approaching figure and scratched group. Okay. Varian, as she leaves you yet again, roll a perception check. 
37. As Clover makes her way over to the figure, the woman that had died, you see her eyes open, her body starts to twitch, and it looks like she's trying to stand, but with one arm, it's a little complicated. Varian will move over to her. Go, um, how? <laughs> how are you alive? <laughs> how? <laughs> <laughs> Clover. Yeah. As you're making your way to the figure, you see them flicker and disappear, and there is what looks to be a shadow burnt into the ground where they were standing. Varian, you see your bestest bud porter pop up right next to you and lift his hand and shadows come out of the ground and start wrapping around the woman in a violent way in a binding way do i notice any of this happen you notice the figure you're going to disappear come on shouldn't you do something medical for her <laughs> Varian will say to him. You can't give the dead medicine. So she is dead still. I should have checked. I assumed the medic would have gotten to all of them. Let me take that soul to the ethereal plane. I can still get that. He looks at you. How? I, I just can. I don't know how to explain it. Very well. I'll hold her still. Varian will outstretch his arm to her and reap her soul. If I turn, looking for, for this guy that just zapped away in front of me, what do I see? Please, please, please. I'm busy. Can you stop interrupting me? No, absolutely not. So you are going to turn around? Yes. <laughs> you see the figure you were running to over by Varian. The woman trying to flail around as shadows are wrapping around her one good arm and her legs keeping her bound and Varian doing something with his palm. I run that way, okay? My patient is alive. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Alright. <laughs> Alright, you run back over to them. Varian, you see the soul start to exit her body okay i will continue that process till it has fully exited her body so he's doing this process as i come up on this situation mm -hmm. clover is going to move up to the side of the woman drop to her knees and i guess she's looking perplexed at the body because it's surrounded by shadows is there an open wound is there something that she could help with without touching the shadows or there's a stump where the arm was <laughs> there are many open wounds okay how is she moving is the kid still in her arms mm -mm. Okay. it rolled out when <laughs> she tried to get up that's morbid okay before you can get an answer roll perception check okay 32 you see the kid's eyes open, and the kid starts to twitch. Whoa, 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 what, what's happening? Varian, the soul is about a foot away from your palm, as it's slowly floating towards you. Okay, I will take. I take. You take? I take. Would I be able to hold on to that and grab a second soul? <laughs> It's smaller. <laughs> you could use your other hand to try and get the other soul. I'll try that. I'll outstretch my other hand towards the child. All right, you see the shadows around the woman get tighter and tighter until her limbs start to break. Oh, stop, stop. And she gets divided into a bunch of little pieces. And then shadows start to wrap around the kid. What are you doing? 
Clover is holding her head. How, how's the extraction force coming? <laughs> <laughs> the soul is about a foot away from the kid's body, making its way downtown to you. Okay. How is Porter reacting to this? He has a helmet on, so you don't know facially. He's just standing there. Uh, he hasn't made any sounds. Cool. Great. He's got one of them helmets with the fancy face coverage. <laughs> Clover's going to look up at him. Stop that! There's no need to do that! But there is. Why? You didn't need to gore her body. But I did. She was already dead. How was she alive? <sighs> Varian, as the kid's soul reaches you, the shadows around the child get tighter and tighter until they... Trigger warning, trigger warning. (laughs) Start cracking and divide into pieces. That's so... Why would that be necessary? So they don't attack us. Why would they attack us? Because I didn't check on you. I'm sorry, they were dead by the time I got to them. It's not your fault. It's mine. Why is it your fault? Because I know better, and I didn't check on you. Sorry I failed. Clover is frustratedly staring at the ground. She's going to get back up. You didn't fail. Death is a lot. Will you be fine for a minute? I need to return these souls. To what? Varian will look (laughs) over at the Apostle... Would you mind keeping an eye on her for a second, Porter? And then, oh. <laughs> and then very... I need a minute! I need a minute! Damn it, I want to end there, but I can't! <laughs> I've never thrown my headphones so quick during the recording session. I love you, Jordan. <laughs> Okay, I'm alright. I'm okay. Fine. Everything's fine. Everything is fine. And then Varian is going to shift to the ethereal plane with the two souls. Clover's <laughs> frustrated stare at the ground is going to shift to her just frozen in place. Can you describe what Varian looks like as he shifts between planes? <laughs> You start to dissolve in a reverse summoning of an Eladrin fashion, so your armor and skin disappear, and then your sinew and muscle and then bone until there's nothing left. I don't notice any of that. (laughs) Who are you sticking with? Varian, you... (laughs) Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Varian, as you reform on the ethereal plane, roll perception check. Oh, I got a lot. 37. You hear the familiar crash of waves and the city. You can see off in the distance, no matter which way you turn, it kind of just tracks with your eye. The area around you looks very familiar and similar to the area you were in on the material plane. However, there's no buildings, and the plant life is very crystalline. Okay, I will look at the sites of home. I will release the two souls. Once they leave your hands, they form into what they looked like as people. The woman will pick up their child. Where are we? What happened? You died. (laughs) Straight to the point. (laughs) How? You were attacked by the Fae. You didn't survive your wounds. What do I do? Varian will point towards the city in the distance. Head to the city. All your needs will be met there. Okay. Um, I don't know if thank you is appropriate. Um... And she just gives you a nod. Varian will nod back and then do the electric boogaloo back to the material plane. (laughs) As you are dissolving back 
Roll a perception check. 31. You see a clear, almost transparent, ten-legged spider pop its little mandibles and face out of the top of a tree, and you disappear. Clover. Yes. I'm just going to pretend like everything's all right there. Hi. 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 <sighs> you didn't even wait for me to answer. Clover, all frustration has gone from her. She's going to blink at the ground for several seconds and then look up at the figure. Did he just say Porter? Yes, that's my name. Porter Barrows? He turns his whole body towards you. Yes. No. (laughs) (laughs) No, that's not... (laughs) No, that's not possible. Um... I watched you die. Clover? Hi. How are you alive? You've grown. What are you doing? He extends his hand towards you. I run up to him and hug him. How is this possible? Why are you here? Why are you alive? I'm sorry if that's a terrible thing to ask you, but no, how are you alive? She extracts herself and stares up at the helmeted face in utter perplexion. I don't exactly know how. I know that God brought me back. One moment, Dad was strangling me. And the next, I was in God's presence. The facial expression that Jordash has right now, though. Okay, How are you? Right now? I am in shock. Thanks. That is fair. But I never thought I would see you again. I thought you were in the ethereal plane thing that he said or somewhere in death. Or I didn't know really what, where you were. I just, you were gone that night. And then, then everything got worse. Where have you been? Why didn't you come back? By the time I was able to leave Gehenna, so much had changed. I did try to go back, but... You tried. I didn't make it very close. Why not? I was told to go help other people. And their needs seemed more immediate. I see. Okay. Okay. What do you mean things got worse? I don't want to know. Do you know that Nash is loneliness? Clover looks so overwhelmed. She's about to have a panic attack and also cry at the same time. What do you mean, Nash's loneliness? That's exactly what I just said. And you're sure? Yeah. Am I allowed to see your face? He lifts his helmet off, and Porter now looks to be in his mid-twenties. Still has his feathery black hair. Has a little bit more of his black stubble and light brown eyes. And he still has speckling of bruising around his neck, courtesies of his father. Hi. Hi. How is this possible? I've already answered. It still doesn't make sense. And yes, Nash is loneliness. And that doesn't make sense either. Okay. How hard would have it been to come back? You know what was happening. Didn't expect this today. This is fun. You're welcome. (laughs) Thank you so much. Clover. What? I always planned on coming back. I just... Other people needed me. These people needed me. Okay. All right, then. Oh, it's good to see you. I'm glad you're not dead. Unless you are dead, and I'm really confused. 
Please say hi to Nash. I can't see him. And I'm really confused why several of my brothers are apostles. I'm sorry. Just doing what you feel is right. He pulls you back in for another hug. She hugs him back, although she is very hurt by things. Although she's not despairing about it, so she's got that going for her. How are you now? Are you okay? No, not really. I ran. Who's left? Beck. Silas. Kaylin left. Not a surprise to anyone there. Mannix is dead. Mannix died? Yeah. I should have came back. In the same place that Nash got his hearing blown out. And Silas lost an eye. And now I'm pretty sure he's just f- f- crazy. Silas is Silas. <laughs> Oh my god, stop <laughs> it! Oh, not so much. Oh. Sorry, Silas. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Was this before you were trained in medicine? Oh. No. I tried to help him. They wouldn't let me. You feel his arms tense around you. What do you mean? They didn't let you. You know what I mean. But that loses the money. I don't know what to tell you. I took a bite out of someone's arm. They tried to stop me. They didn't like that very much. I'm glad you're okay. Well, we'll see. What does that mean? Well, I... So, they put out a wanted poster for me. So that's been really fun. How old are you? Seventeen. I'm almost eighteen. Why do they want you back? You've almost aged out. Because I became rather useful. As you say that, Clover, you start seeing bones forming. (laughs) And then tendons and muscle and skin. And Varian is there. (laughs) They're hugging now. (laughs) (laughs) So Varian reforms and sees them. What the fuck happened? Um. God damn it. Okay. So as Varian reappears, since he already started shifting between planes when he saw the creature, he's going to reappear, look at Clover and Porter... Blink for a second. Say, fuck. One more second. And then he's going to <laughs> dematerialize again in the hopes that he makes it back there in time to help because he was just like, okay, I'm leaving. Oh shit. Oh shit. I'm, I'm already in the process of leaving. I can't turn around. I have to go back. Hit the button. And then go back again. The, reload, elevator, reload. the elevator door is just closed. Hold on one second. I'm hitting the button. Oh, no. I'll be back in five seconds. Just don't die in those five seconds. <laughs> All right. So you see Varian pop up, say that, and disappear and start dissolving again. Clover blinks over and then looks back at Porter. You have an interesting friend. He's been pretty reliable so far. Do you trust him? Mostly. Marion. Yes. You reform on the ethereal plane, and there is a very glassy-looking cocoon dangling from a tree. (laughs) Are they already lost at that point, or would I be able to save them still? Would I know? Roll... That'd be a lore. Hey, I can actually use a lore for the, technically, the boneyard. <laughs> ethereal plane. 29. You know that the ethereal spiders tend to save their meals for later, so you could probably still save them. Do I see the ethereal spider somewhere? I'll roll a perception check. 37, again. <laughs> Somehow. For the 15th time this episode. <laughs> 
for a second you don't, but as you scan the treetop, you see a glint from one of its eyes. Have I fought these things before? Yes. Okay. And I know I can take care of them by myself? Yes. I'm going to pull out my bow and start shooting it. Because right. I'm going to kill it before I <laughs> save them so that it can't attack me while I'm trying to save them. Okay. Roll the hit. 39. That crits? So double would be 20. The spider explodes from your <laughs> <laughs> your force damage, and before its body bits can hit the ground, they evaporate into a blue mist. Okay. I uh, will move over to where the cocoon is dangling. How high up is the cocoon? The bottom of the cocoon is about 10 feet off the ground. What is the terrain of the ground underneath them? Is it just the glassy... It's like a white, powdery sand. Okay. I will shoot the strain of the cocoon. Okay. <laughs> to knock the cocoon free. It falls to the ground. I will move over there, and... I will spend an action to turn my bow into a sword. Okay. And I will use the sword to carefully make a cut along the cocoon to rip the cocoon off of them. Roll performance check. I impale them. <laughs> 28. Right. You're able to cut through the cocoon without harming the souls underneath and get them out of their bindings. Are they still conscious? Yep. Sorry about that. I saw it as I was leaving and I came right back. Uh, thank you seems appropriate now. You're welcome. Can you stand? Yeah. One, uh, one sec. She'll push herself up. Okay. Does she grab her child? She does. Okay. How long would it take to get them to close enough of the city where they wouldn't be attacked by things. Roll another lore check. That is a natty 20, so 35. You'd know it'd take about 20 to 30 minutes there and then 20 to 30 minutes back. <sighs> They're gonna get eaten otherwise and the clover will be all sad. If you told her. If I told her. Who is your moral compass <laughs> bothering you today, sir? Clover was really sad about the fact that they died. I'm just saying. Varian will start walking towards the city and then look at the lady and her kid and say, Keep up. Okay. And Varian will start trying to quickly guide them towards the city. Dane as close as he can without encroaching himself into trouble. Alrighty. Clover. Now you got some time with your brother. <sighs> yeah. A lot of time. Oh, motherfucker. So so much uh, backstory shit happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you guys headed? We're trying to find guilt because... He thinks that Gilt might have information about someone he lost. So we're headed north, not close to Grace. For good reason. I assume I'm just getting blood and guts all over him. <laughs> cool. So this is the path you took to stay as far away from Grace as possible. <sighs> Clover. I don't understand that reaction. And I feel like I need to sit down. But I would appreciate if you would tell me what you meant. He stops hugging you so you can <laughs> sit down if you want. Will you sit with me? Sure. Okay. Right, Culver inhales a deep breath and drops down to a crisscross applesauce. He sits down. The roads by repentance are... Heavily guarded and not open to the public. Oh. So how do... How do we get north from here without going that way? Why aren't they open to the public? 
Is it because there's fae and stuff in the prison? It's a cautionary measure. There are... So they imprison the roads too? <laughs> Clover makes a little joke and then just rubs her face. <laughs> I'm so glad Varian is gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Freaking out. Unless if you have documentation allowing you to travel. We don't. It's to protect the prison from Fey touched and children of the abyss. <clears throat> what are those? <sighs> Fey touched are those that seem to be able to use Fey magic. And the children of the abyss are more or less creatures from the whole. Creatures? How? Some are very human presenting and others not so much. From it's hard to quantify exactly what they are. They're very varied in both appearance and abilities. So, but how can someone control if they're born either way? I'm just curious what your thoughts because you're an apostle and I haven't seen you in 11 years. 10? I'm sorry, I didn't recognize you. Um, I mean, it's been a long time. Beck is still an asshole. It's not surprising. It's unfortunate. For us. It's probably what's kept him alive, though. Yeah. To answer your questions, though. They can't choose where they're born, but they can choose how they act once grown. But don't you kill them? We kill the ones that attack us so if they're either way and they don't attack you then then they don't die from us no some of the town's folk are more paranoid and if they get a hint that you might be they touched they'll form mobs unfortunately so you just go with the crown is that god's will we don't go with the crowd, Clover. We protect humanity. Can I ask you a question, Porter? You've I feel been like... asking me questions, Clover. I know, but if God is all-powerful and stuff, and you follow him and trust him, then why, why didn't he find us important at all? What do you mean? You know what I mean. It's not just us. It was everyone... At the orphanage. <laughs> You're just like, fuck yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Keep talking. You know what happens there. Why wouldn't he do anything to stop that? Given that two of us are apostles, I will make the assumption that maybe he is planning on stopping it. When? Probably once Nash's training is complete. When a hundred more children die? Hopefully it won't take that long. I'm sorry. There has to be some reason. Okay. Perth has many connections. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah, he does. I never want to see a stupid face ever again. That is fair, Clover, and very understandable. That being said, how would you like to accompany me and Nash to stop what they're doing? 
You have no idea if I'm capable of helping. You can tend to the wounded. I know that. Not fast enough, in your opinion. I never said that. Sorry. This is, um, a lot at once. And I could, I could tend to the wounded, or I could kill him. I'm sure we could give you the final blow, but no offense, but I don't think fighting is in your wheelhouse. How do you think I survived? Patching yourself up? <laughs> they called you the Copper Queen for a reason. Yeah. Yeah, but no, I didn't survive because I could only patch myself up and barter. I started winning a lot. You learned to fight? Unfortunately. I'm both proud and saddened you had to learn how. There is nobody else. I'm sorry. Me too. When do you think Nash will be done with his training then? Because I can't go back to Grace alone. Depends how fast he catches on. A couple oh. weeks to a month, maybe. <sighs> There's a lot that I would like to say, but I don't know if I can. What do you mean? I don't know you, but I know you. That makes sense. Do you not trust me anymore? I trust you, but it... you've also spent a lot of time with God, and I don't know him. And God doesn't seem to like certain types of people, which makes me uncomfortable. I'm pretty sure he's fine with redheads. That's not what I mean, Porter. What do you mean? I don't want you to hate me. Why would I ever hate you, Clover? Because I'm... Something that the Archon fights against. Your fate touched? No. I'm pretty sure I'm not. But I thought I was. What do you know about Mom? Varian. <laughs> <laughs> As you make your way towards the city, the land you're on quickly turns into a beach and there is a large green ocean in front of you separating you from the city and as you continue forward the ocean solidifies underneath you and creates this green crystalline bridge and you would know to stop as going any further would make your life more complicated. Okay. But do I know if they would be able to continue safely? Yes. Okay. Just continue going forward. I know it doesn't look like it. You'll be safe. Okay. Thank you again. You're welcome. You see them make their way across the bridge and disappear over the horizon. As soon as they disappear, I will turn around and start running back towards where I came from. Let me finish that <laughs> sentence. <laughs> Alright, as you're making your way back, roll a perception check. 35. You hear slight pulsating of what almost sounds like wind. Uh, roll a lore check. 26. You would know that that is the sound of one of the plane keepers. Uh, the ones that you... Did you fuck up some plane keepers on the way out there? One of the same kind of creature that you had tricked at the shrine. Oh yeah, those guys. Okay. Do I see anything? Well, you just hear that pulsating for right now. 
All right, I will make haste as fast as I can now that I don't have souls weighing me down, <laughs> slowing me down. All right. You get back to where you were and you see this long creature with root-like tendrils for feet, no eyes, a large maw, weaving their hands through the air. As soon as I see them, I'm just going to, nope, I'm going to do the electric boogaloo there, and I'll just move whatever little bit of distance back to where I was on the material plane, and where I am. As you start to dissolve, you see it turn and start dashing towards you, and then you disappear. We're both running into our backstories this episode. (laughs) Guess who's back? (laughs) Story. Back again. (laughs) And we'll end there. Thanks everyone so much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed listening as much as I enjoyed learning a bit about Clover's backstory. We have social media. Check us out at Top of the Round on Facebook and Instagram and at Totorcast on Twitter and Blue Sky. We also have a TikTok at Totor Podcast and a website, totorpodcast.com. Check out all these places. Click, like, share, comment. We really appreciate it. Shout out to our Vessel and Witness tier patrons, Ray, Jermaine, and Grayson. Thank you so very much for your support. We appreciate you very much. Shout out to our Apostle tier patrons, Ray, the Apostle of Scorn. Grayson, the Apostle of Joy. Tay, the Apostle of Ecstasy. RMK, the Apostle of Compassion. Alyssa, the Apostle of Rage. Jem, the Apostle of Curiosity. Bluebird, the Apostle of Awkwardness. Nami's the Apostle of Bitterness. Kofi T, the Apostle of Coziness. Gabe, the Apostle of Anticipation. And Kobe Beef, the Apostle of Bewilderment. Thank you guys so much for all your support. Come join us. Become an Apostle. You know you want to. Thanks, guys. Okay, bye. We also have a Discord. The link to that is in the show notes below. We'd love to have you guys. Head over to Podchaser or Apple Podcasts and leave us a review. Let us know how we're doing. Head over to Spotify, leave us a rating, and let us know. We will shout you out here on the show. Thanks, guys. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>